So here's like a, just a brief agenda for today. I want to make a, a quick introduction about myself. And so I'm just going to give you some power system basics just to make sure we are on the same page when we get to the electricity markets. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the deregulation process, market design, who are the market agents, and then how the market price is formed. And I also want to mention some current challenges that are being faced by electricity markets, some of my uh, ongoing research that are basically uh, applications to the Brazilian system. And you see that in every slide, I kind of leave a source in the bottom. So you guys have additional resources for those specific topics. And again, you can always use myself as an additional resource as well. So Kyle talked a little bit about myself already, but just let me just give you some more information on that. I'm originally from Brazil. That's why you see that most of my applications are for the Brazilian system. I have a, a bachelor and a master degree in electrical engineering, and I have a PhD in operations research and mechanical engineering from the University of Texas at Austin. I joined the Nicholas School in January 2018 and the Energy Initiative in July 2019. Some recent courses that I, I taught at Duke are time series analysis, environmental data analytics, modeling for energy systems, markets for electric power and economics of modern power systems. And to be honest, like all these slides you see today is like a combination. I pulled a lot of things from the markets for electric power and the economics of modern power system classes. So it might be a little trunk stain, but I'll try to make the connection uh, among these slides. And I kind of wanted you guys to have all the information I could possibly share with you. I probably won't have time to go over the details of all these slides, but again, it will be available for you guys later on. And then in terms of research and work experience, I work a lot, like Kyle said, with renewable energy development and integration to power systems, the co-optimization or coordination of water and energy systems, power system economics, and climate change effect on energy production. So just to get started, like I mentioned, an intro to power systems. So power system has four major components. We have the generation, which is the source of power. We have load or demand that will consume the power. We have the transmission system that transmits power, usually at higher level voltages. And we have distribution system that also transmit power, but is the one that's going to take care of the delivery of this power to consumers. And we also have a coupled with the, the transmission and distribution systems, a lot of monitoring and control. So a simple representation of the grid, I'm sure you have all seen this, this image. So in red, we have generation, in blue, transmission lines, and some common voltage levels for transmission assets. And then we have the substations and the step down transformers that will lead to the green part, which is the distribution. And this is actually a node grid uh, representation because you can see that we have generation on one side, transmission, and then we have all the consumers connected on the distribution grid. But as you are aware, nowadays we have a lot of distributed energy resources. And what that means is on the grid part, we are also gonna have some distributed generators. We can have storage, we can have other agents in the green part as well. But still, this gives you a, a nice representation of how we generate. Then we uh, use step up transformers because on high voltages we have uh, less losses uh, with the transportation. And then we step down and deliver that power to, to consumers, OK? One thing I wanted to, and if that's OK with Kyle and Trey, I know that you guys asking me to talk for 30 minutes and then 15 minutes for Q&A. But since this is really heavy in content, I'm OK if students have questions and they want to ask it right away, rather than keeping all the questions to the end and 
making them not understand the whole thing because of the question in the beginning of the presentation. So we can have some large consumers like industry that can connect directly to, to the transmission system. That's why you can see the transmission co customer there. Yeah, that's possible. But usually really larger consumers will have that possibility. Consumers like us, we need to connect to the distribution, uh, distribution system. A little bit about the electricity trading history. So in the past, as you might be aware, we had only verticalized companies or what we call vertically integrated utilities. And they carried out all activities within the market from production to delivery to the final customer. And there was some problems with these because uh, there is a lot of characteristics of natural monopolies in the electricity industry. Can you imagine like having another transmission system competing with an existing transmission system? So there's definitely a natural monopoly in the transmission and distribution of electricity. But the idea is we can still introduce competition in the generation and uh, the consumer sector. So uh, in the, I would say in the 90s, some countries, some states in the US started the deregulation process, or in other words, the unbundling of uh, these verticalized utilities. So now we have many actors, we have different perspectives, we have different objectives. And the main idea is to introduce competition in the electricity sector. So the groundwork for deregulation in the US was laid out by the Public Utilities Regulatory Policy Act or PURPA in 1978, but the process only began in the early 90s with the Energy Policy Act of 1992 that finally created the outline for a competitive wholesale electricity generation market. And here in the US, the deregulation has not been introduced in all states. As you can see in the picture here, we have states that have both gas and electricity markets deregulated. We have states with one or the other, and we have states like North Carolina that has both gas and electricity still regulated. So, it, as you can imagine, when we introduce competition, then we introduce the, the concept of electricity markets. So I want to talk a little bit about electricity as a commodity. So the electrical energy or electricity carries some of the characteristics of a commodity. It looks and feels exactly the same wherever it is generated. It can be traded in global markets and is used in any quantity but it also behaves like any, unlike any other commodity and that's what makes the electricity market so complex. And the first reason is <clears throat> it must be used immediately as it is generated. So supply must meet demand at any given time across the grid. That's the main challenge with operating power grids. And it's a storage or transport carry have losses and costs. So this makes the uh, electricity market very complex. And then we have other, uh, other things to add to that. So for example, we have a lack of demand elasticity, right? So slowly changing with real time pricing and automatic load control can help. But if you think about it, we need electricity at all times. So even if the electricity price is a little bit higher, we're still gonna turn on our ACs, we're still gonna turn on our lights. So it's not like uh, food that if the price is too high, you buy something else. So I just wanted you guys to, to have this idea that the demand is, uh, is not uh, elastic. Forecast demand is never exactly equal to real demand. So it's really hard to forecast demand. Electricity cannot be stored. I know you guys are like, oh no, 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 we have storage. It's true, we have storage and our technology for storage is improving uh, every year, but it's still expensive. We still cannot store electricity in 
high like a lot of quantity and for long periods of time so that's what i mean by electricity cannot be stored like you can't store electricity for months or for one year to the other it's uh, there are some unpredict unpredictable problems caused by generator outages we have some environmental goals that are pushing markets to integrate more and more variable energy resources and i'm going to talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the presentation so this brings even more uncertainty to the electricity system the power produced by all generators is pooled what do i mean by that so the power grid is you can imagine it like a pool, right? Each generator is throwing a bucket of water in that pool. And then we have some holes that are the consumers, but we don't know if Kai or Trey are getting the, the, their power from generator A or generator B. So that's why we say that the power is pooled. And like I said before, supply and demand must be in balance or the system will collapse and it's in balance at all times, okay? Uh, so the next thing I want to talk a little bit more is market agents and then maybe that will clarify even more Bain's question from before. So who are the market participants? We have the generating companies that will produce and sell uh, electricity. They can be a single plant, they can be a portfolio of plants. So we have some generating, generating companies that have more than one plant and they are selling uh, their electricity in the markets. We have independent power producers. So sometimes when we have vertically integrated utilities, we call these generating companies IPPs. And they all have one thing in common. They wanna maximize the profit they make from the sale of uh, electricity and other services. We have the distribution companies or the distribution utilities. They will own and operate the distribution network. They, they, they have this traditional monopoly characteristic for the sale of electricity. So here in in, in North Carolina, if you want electricity, you're gonna buy electricity from Duke, uh, Duke Energy or Duke Progress. We don't have options. Who is gonna be our, uh, our utility? Some markets, you have that option. We have, uh, they have this objective of maximizing the regulated profit. Why do I call it regulated profit? Well, since this is a natural monopoly, these, uh, we need some regulation rules to make sure that the distribution companies are operating their system, providing electricity with quality of service and at a fair price for its customer. Because if you, if you think about it, if I only have Duke to give me electricity, who, who is gonna make sure that I'm paying a fair price for that and that I have the quality uh, of the services? So usually the distribution uh, sector will be regulated even in uh, unbundled or deregulated markets. We have retailers. So retailers usually buy the electricity on the market and then they resell this electricity to consumers. They sometimes don't even own large physical assets and they can be a subsidiary of a distribution company and their objective is to maximize profit from the difference between wholesale and retail prices. Uh, and just to clarify, I'm, I'm trying to give this overview. This is not just US. There's, you see that I have some, on the next slide, I have like market operators from different countries. So it's not necessarily the US. I'm trying to keep these as general as possible. And even within the US, there are differences in market rules from uh, one, one side to the other. So I'm just trying to keep it as general as possible to, to get you all the big picture. 
we have market operators. So here's the example. So the US I'm mentioning here, COT, PJM, CC is the market operator in Brazil, Nordpool. So just trying to give you examples of names that you're probably reading right there. And I just wanted you to be able to connect that to, to the class today. So the market operator, they will run the computer system that will match bids and offers submitted by buyers and sellers. And they run the market settlement system. They're gonna monitor delivery of energy and they forward payments from buyers to sellers. Their objective is to run an efficient market to encourage trading. We also have the independent system operator. They should be independent from other participants to ensure the fairness of the market. So in Brazil, for example, we have uh, ONS. It's just like one system operator for the whole system. Here you have I, uh, the New York ISO, California ISO, MISO, all these ISOs the, that you hear. They usually run the market of last resort. What do I mean by that? They do the balance of generation and load in real time. They don't own any assets. They usually only own the computing and communication assets. Sometimes they can be called ITOs or ISOs. And they will be called ITOs when they also own, when they also operate the transmission network. Their objectives are to ensure the security of the system and maximize the use that other participants can make of the system. So the regulator, like I said, would be the government body. So for example, here in the US, we can name FERC that will determine or approve the market rules, investigated uh, abuses of market power, set the prices for products and service. So they just want to make sure that the electricity sector is operating economically uh, and efficiently and uh, make sure that the quality of the supply is appropriate. And we also have the small consumers that will buy electricity from a retailer. They usually don't participate on the market. And what they want is to pay as little as possible for electrical energy at a satisfactory level. We have the large consumers like we saw in the system uh, representation that can often participate in the market, buy their electricity directly from the wholesale market. And just like the small consumers, they also wanna pay as little as possible.